now that we've seen our spec in Capybara, we need to tell our Rails application that we're going to use those libraries. And so what we're going to do is we're going to edit a file called the gem file. And gems are Ruby's name for libraries. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, go down uh, about right here. And I'm going to say I want the gem Capybara. Now, uh, Ruby has this idea that you have different ways of, of using Rails. And if you do it like this, it will use Rails in, in all environments. But we only want to use Capybara when we're testing. So what we're going to do is we're going to tell Rails that only involve Capybara when we're doing testing. Now, we're going to do something a little bit different for our spec and the reason is that we might want to use our spec as um, something that we we interact with so we're going to both include our spec in the testing environment but we're also going to say we'd like to be able to run our spec with the development code so if this doesn't make uh, total sense uh, don't worry about it because it will become more clear as we start to use these different environments. So we're going to include the RSpec Rails gem so that we get the RSpec um, library that incorporates the, the Rails features that it, it provides. So if we save this, we can go ahead now and tell Rails to um, update the application for those so we can do a, a bundle install you might be able to do a, a bundle update <clears throat> and what this will do is make sure that all the libraries that are listed in this gem file are now on your machine it might have taken you a little bit longer I have all these already installed on my machine so it just says oh grab all these and, and use all them so it's quite easy to to do that the next thing that we need to do is tell our Rails application to install some libraries and what we're going to do is we're going to use rake which is ruby make and we're going to do our spec install and what this the um, actually we're going to use rails generate and what we're going to do is we want you to install all of the files that our spec needs in order to run uh, I'm just typing G because it's faster, uh, but Rails Generate does, does the same thing. And what this does is this will create an RSpec uh, directory, and inside that uh, spec directory, it's going to create this file called spec helper right here, which loads the RSpec environment the, the way we want. The nice thing is this RSpec automatically does the dash dash color for us so we won't have to keep typing in that command line parameter anymore. Uh, finally what we need to do is we need to go here and we need to edit the spec helper file because we need to tell our spec that we're going to use capybara so we're going to require or, or use a library we're going to use a capybara our spec just like we did in our example program before and with this we now have set up our Rails application so that we can go ahead and use our spec and capybara so let's go ahead and, and commit this so we can check the the status we've edited our gem file created our spec and file and spec directory so we're going to add those explicitly and we don't have to list all the files in spec because it's recursive, right? So now if we do our status, we'll see the modified gem file and the new files that were created. And we can do a commit. And <coughs> what this will allow us to do is set up our spec for our application. Uh, we set up the gem file. And ran real R spec. 
install to allow testing to run properly. So now we've got a uh, semi-good um, uh, thing to run. We, we have a problem here because we're running Vim inside of Vim. Uh, this will allow us to be able to use our spec in all our future ones. So I'll go ahead and commit this outside of the video, but you should be able to run our spec and do exactly what it allows you to do. So now we are ready to do some initial development for our Rails application.